Today we'll take our comet pictures from this, to this, to this, and finally to this, all within PixInsight. As some of you know, I love Cyril, and the last two videos covered how to stack and process a comet fully within Cyril. But admittedly, I am better at post-processing things in PixInsight, and in this video, we'll do the exact same process within PixInsight. I'll be using the exact same data that we saw in Cyril, and we'll go through the entire process here. And we can see some clear differences when we compare the final output from both of these programs. In this video, I use Star Exterminator and Noise Exterminator as part of the process. These are both paid plugins, but you can use free alternatives such as Starnet, which we did in Cyril, and Graxpert, which we also did in Cyril, which also works in PixInsight. I'll also use other plugins in this video, including Image Blend, Game, SETI Astro, Star Stretch, and Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch. Link to all those plugins will be in the description below so you can download them and follow along. If you'd like to support this channel, consider checking me out on Patreon and on Buy Me A Coffee. And I'm at the park with my son right now, and this is his lunch bag. Let's Almost everything he has. Yes. All right, let's start stacking our Comet image. So we're going to go to Script, Batch Processing, Weighted Batch Preprocessing. When that loads here, I already have my darks, dark flats and my flats loaded. But if you don't, add those. And I'm going to add in my lights by going to Add Lights. Okay, so I added in 100 lights. So while we're here, I want to make sure that image registration and image integration is on. Normally, I would manually manually register my images and manually integrate the images. But we're going to take a, an easier path. And I'm going to uncheck auto crop because I don't want it to auto crop. I'll do it myself. And again, like I said, my darks and my flats are already added. If I go to my calibration tab here, we can see that the darks and the flats are automatically applied. If I go to post calibration I am NOT going to drizzle or do fast integration go to my pipeline I can see that I have all these local normalization I'm gonna turn off for now it'll be a little bit faster but feel free to do that yourself and see if that affects your data before this is done I'm gonna make sure my output directory is correct and I create a new directory called PI this is this is great I don't have to do anything else and then I'm gonna click on run this shouldn't take too long but let's continue and then we'll check back when this is done right here. All right, that finished. And now if we look at our directory, I have a bunch of these files, these folders. Inside again, the WPP window opens again. We can close this. And the one thing we can do right now is if I go here and I go to my masters and I open my master light file here, I am, all right, so I'm gonna STF this and see that, don't unlink STF, we can see that, you know, this stacked on the stars, but the comet looks super weird. So, all right, so now I actually wanna just, I just want the stars here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to open up star X. So you can go to process RC Astro and star X here, or if you have star net, you can do that as well. I'm gonna click on large overlap and unscreen stars. It will do a little bit of a better job getting rid of the stars because otherwise it'll also get some of the cometary nebula here as well. All right, so that did it. And if you look here, there's still a little bit of the star streak here, but we can actually try and remove the stars again. But I'm gonna leave it for now. I'm gonna close this, leave that there. I am going to remove this. So I'm gonna do stars V1, and I'm gonna leave this alone for now. So next thing we wanna do is align our registered images on the comet. So we're gonna to go to process. We're gonna to go to image registration, comet alignment. It's gonna ask for you to add files. And this is going to add something in my registered folder and I'm going to add all of these. There's a hundred of these. Great. Now it wants an output directory. So I'll click this and I'm going to create another folder here called comet reg. Select folder. The post fix will be CA for comet aligned. I'm going to click on show first image. I will auto stretch this with SDF. Scroll in and click on the comet core. It'll auto detect the location of XO and YO, Y0. And then I'll click on show last image. It'll open the last frame here, which is 99. Open this, scroll in, click the comet and you can see that it calculated the xy delta as 58 by 86 and don't need to do anything else and i'm going to click on this button here and it'll register everything on the comet and we'll have a new sequence all right that completed now if i open up my directories here i now should have a comet reg directory here 
So now I have everything registered on the comet. So the next step will be to remove the stars from all those comet aligned images so that when we stack them, we don't get the star trails. So to do this first, we want to first open one of these images because we want to create a mask around the comet core. Well, this is a, I'm going to pick another one because that has some planes and star trails or uh, satellites. All right, so I'm here and I am going to create a mask here. So the mask I want to use is called the game script. So script, utilities, game. I'll have a link to this in the description below. So if you don't have this already, install it. It's really useful. I'm going to do auto STF. I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to click on add. It's going to be a small ellipsis. centered on the comet and I'm going to click on gradient edge mask. It will create a gradient mask where it gets thinner and thinner on the edges. It'll make the tail not get washed out or not get removed during the star during the star removal. And the way this happens is that so some of these stars will actually move through the gradient mask field so they will appear in some of these frames and then when you stack them that's okay. I I think we can work around that later on. Um, when we do stacking, we can try and use rejection to get rid of them. So I'm going to click on OK. It creates a gradient mask. For some reason, it gives me a full screen, so I'm just going to do Control t to make it smaller. So this is my mask. I'm going to rename this to my Comet Mask. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to open star X so you can, I have it on the side. We can also go to process RC Astro and star exterminator. So since I already had those checked, I might do on screen stars. I think it, I think it'll actually do a little bit better job, even though when you hover over it, it says to do it on nonlinear images or to do it on linear images that I'm going to do that anyway. And I'm going to click on process batch. It asks for output for starless files, so we want to do that. So I'm going to go back here, click a new folder called starless. We don't need to output the star files because we already have our stars here. Cancel like that. And then for the mask, I'm going to select my comet mask and I'm going to click on invert because the way the mask works is that the black area is protected and the white area is not. So if I have it not inverted, the comet Anything that enters the, the mask will get removed, but everything else will get protected. But when we invert it, the comet head gets protected and the black gets removed um, or will get star X'd. So unscreen stars, add suffixes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then select input files and execute. So I'm here. I'm going to go to PI, my comet reg, select all, press open. It says there's 100 files to be processed, press OK. And I'm going to press OK. And this is going to take a little while. It takes between 30 to 50 seconds per frame. And I have 100 of them, so it's going to take about an hour. So we'll, we're going to fast forward through this. All right, that completed. Let's take a look at one of those files. So it's going to be in my new starless directory here. Let's open one up. Let's do this. And look at that. The comet core is still here. We can see some of the stars, but most of the stars are gone. This could be some artifacts here, but it's okay. I'm going to close this. And now we're going to integrate or stack all of our comet starless images. So we're going to go to script, or sorry, process, image integration, image integration again. We're going to add our files. I'm going to go to my starless files here, select all of these. Combination, we'll do average, uh, the integration, and then pixel rejection. I'm going to do some pixel rejection because I want to get rid of some of those stars that are going to go through this, the comet head. So I'm going to do a once rise sigma clipping, and my pixel rejection two will be four low, two, three high. Uh, in, in Cyril, I did a low of three and a high of five. So I think I will do the same thing here. I don't think the slow is going to do much either. The sigma high will be three. It may not get rid of all the stars, but it's okay. I'm trying not to get rid of the tail if I can. And then I'll click this and it will start stacking. It should take only a couple of minutes and then we'll check back in soon. All right, that completed. So I can close this. Uh, we can auto stretch the high rejection and we can see that the uh, stars got removed. Great. The low is not going to have anything. And then the integration here, if I open this up. So this is what the comet looks like. It actually looks really good, right? And you can kind of see the tail. And here I'm going to put 
put this over here. So now what we want to do is we want to process this. But before we do anything else, I actually want to open up my stars V1. Um, if I auto stretch this one, it's actually going to look weird. Yeah, it's going to look weird. But what I want to do is I want to crop, not this one. I'm going to crop my comet and my stars image at the same time so that they're the same dimensions when I copy them or combine them later on, they look okay. I'm going to crop down quite a bit and I get the comet there and then the tail there. And once I have that, I'm going to take this little triangle icon here, click and drag it to my stars and then click on the checkbox and it'll crop these two. So now if I, if you look, if I overlay these two, you can see that they're pretty much the same. I'm just going to hide that. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to put the stars v1 away for now just to reset quickly i restarted pix inside and opened up my two integrations and named them comet and stars respectively so that they're easy to work with now let's process them now i'll do a quick background extraction so i'm just going to delete these two and then create a couple more here press ok get rid of this and then let's stretch this again, see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. Stars look a lot better, right? Not not as bad as Starnet, but we can still see some star streaks here. Uh, I don't know if it translates well into the video, but I can still see some ghosts. But I think it's okay. It looks a lot better than it did before. So now we can do some more processing on this. So, uh, and then I'll do some noise X. I'll do intensity color separation as well as frequency separation, keeping it all default values, clicking and dragging should smooth out some of the noise that we see here. There we go. So the noise got removed. So as we remove the noise, we can see some more of the star streaks here, but it actually does not look bad at all. So before and after pretty good, right? Before and after. All right. Next, we can do some curves adjustments. So bring up the preview. I'm going to do the RGBK. That helps make the background a little bit darker, make the tail pop out. It's just a tiny bit of an S curve. All right, let's do this. Reset. Don't want to do saturation here. Maybe a little bit of lightness to brighten it up a little bit. Yeah, it's got to be a little bit careful to not lose detail. All right, I did a little bit of RGBK and lightness adjustments, and this is what I came up with. I think I'm happy with this. So now we're gonna do, we're gonna stretch this. Okay, so I am going to reset this, reset the stretch. I'm gonna open up GHS, which is Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch. Open my preview window. I'm gonna just click on a random spot here, click Send to set SP for my symmetry point, and then I'm going to stretch this. Let's do my local intensity. It's actually looking really nice. I can move my, uh, let's reset my symmetry point. Okay, that's one. Let's reset, changing this to linear, moving this over. I'm trying to make sure I'm not clipping anything. Press okay. Reset, back to generalized hyperbolic. So I'll click somewhere here, do symmetry point, stretch it again a little bit local intensity protect highlights feel free to skip through this normally i will fast forward through the ghs part but i've had a couple people reach out and ask me to do this slower so i'm leaving it here but please feel free to give me feedback on whether or not this is helpful or not Let's reset this. I don't think I can do another linear without clipping, but I might do a little bit. Yeah, that, that clips a lot of data. It's, it's hard to do. Um, so I can do this, which is the fine adjustments, which will do like fine adjustments here. A reset generalized hyperbolic. Remember, click somewhere, send to SP. So I think this is okay. Okay, so I'll just close this. I think this is okay. And again, like the more I stretch, the more the little star streaks start to come out. But it's okay. Uh, I think I can do another small 
noise X here. This time I'll do uh, the high frequency intensity by decrease it to like 50 and the low frequency intensity I'll also decrease it to 50. I don't want to do too much. And the color denoise as well. I'll bring it down a little bit and then let's see what this looks like when we're zoomed into the tail. All right, so how does that look? So if we do before and after, I think the tail looks, it's a little bit better, right? Okay, cool. So at this point, you know, feel free to do other, other processing here as well, but I think I'm happy with the comet processing here. It's as good as I'm gonna get for the amount of data that I have. The tail looks really good. And now we're gonna focus on doing the stars. So before I do anything else with the stars, I'm actually going to first go to script, astrometry, let's do image solver, let's solve this. Because it is a color image, I should be able to do SPCC on this, spectral photometric color calibration and get some real-ish star colors. All right, that's done. Let's do SPCC. I didn't have to change anything because I do have this as a preset. I'm just using a basic UV aircraft filter. All right, these are my weight balance functions. Those are my star colors. Great. We can see some good star colors there, but this is not stretched. So we can do, you know, like an auto stretch on this, but I'm going to use SETI Astro's star stretch tool. So star stretch. So I'm going to set this to, let's say, six color boost of 1.25 with the show preview that looks pretty good I'm just trying to see what the so this thing looks like that so let's see if I can remove SCNR if that removes it more or so but I'll execute this so it'll give me a this thing but I'm going to do another so I have this open here already so I'm going to do another star X and I'll do on-screen stars, which works better on a non-linear image. So there we go. So now, now we don't have the the weird artifact there, right? So, so I can close this here. So we have stars, stars. So yeah, we remove stars from a stars image. Great, genius. Okay. So now we can go to script, utilities, image blend. It's a script. If you don't have it, install it. It's an amazing tool. So my view integration is going to be Comet. And then integration is going to be stars, stars. There we go. It looks pretty good. I'm just doing a screen blend. Uh, if you want to make the Comet a little bit brighter, you can bring down the highlights to like 90. And you can see that it gives the Comet a little bit more life. And then I'll click on the check button. And then if I close this, here is our blended image. Look at that. So I'll just name this, right? Finished comment or something, whatever. And if you have any questions about anything I cover, please let me know. If you take images of the comment and you want to share it with the community, consider joining our Discord server. The invite link is in the description. It's a growing community of astronomers and astrophotographers, and we'd love to have you and see what you've been able to do. There's still time to get these comments and more that will be coming our way. So happy comment hunting and clear skies.